we were actually asked this question. So Andy Rui came into the question. He said, I want to pursue music. How can I achieve something in music and not be broke? Right? It's like how to not be broke as a musician. And like, I would just give you like the TLDR of like how it worked for me, right? And, I, and we're just seeing Jake said, my current goal is to be gigging on the weekends and doing content creation during the week. Like, that's an amazing. So I'm a big inspiration. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm a big inspiration. There you go, dude. Well, that's like, that's exactly what I do. Now I'm going to show you what that path looked like, right? So the path that looked like how I got to the place where I'm earning money. So right now, I do content and content does not pay. So my my thing is content does not pay. So I had to put myself in a position to be like, okay, for five days a week, you can't earn money. Like, but for two days a week, you need to earn enough money to take care of your family and pay for this, to pay for this time. Because every time I'm not working Monday to Friday, that is me not taking on another job that could earn more money potentially for my family and take care of them. So I'm making a big bet on the next stage of my life. So I'm trying to turn my music into a nine to five, which is a very bold thing to do. And very few musicians can ever pull that off. And so if I do pull it off, you're going to have the whole framework of seeing how I did it, which is going to be fantastic because then you guys can copy it and you can win. So the starting point of how this worked is you go from phase one, which is zero. So this is what it's like to have zero dollars zero opportunity and zero everything like straight up zero now the way i like actually i i'm going i'm i'm already lying to you i'm not starting from zero when i finished berkeley college of music i went to nashville and i worked at a record label for free as an intern doing digital marketing and all that stuff which was really cool i got to got to meet some amazing musicians and i got to do like the release campaigns of like really successful artists and stuff like that so i got to see what it looked like on the back end um, as like the marketing and business side of it. And that was quite cool. Now, when I moved back here, I literally had zero dollars because when I was in America, I could not earn money properly. Like it was very hard to make money. Nashville is saturated as hell. I was not as good as the other musicians. I was not a good guitarist. I was not a good singer. Um, I did not know. I knew like five songs how to sing and play, like five, like literally five. So that's what the starting point was. But the only thing I didn't have was debt. So when I went to Berkeley, I had a 30% a, a scholarship at Berkeley. I tested out of heaps of subjects, so that saved money. I went to community college to, to do extra credits and transfer them to Berkeley, so that saved money. Um, I only ate like a pizza once a day. I like literally had the worst possible diet known to humans. Um, like I lived out off campus, everything I could do to reduce the costs of going to Berkeley, I did to make sure I could finish Berkeley. And my dad, like bless his soul, and he's the most, one of the most amazing humans in the world. He like, him and my mom worked fucking hard and they let me do this. So they covered the rest of the costs. So they were like, like imagine them parents, like working so hard, like it costs like 250, like 250 to $300,000, depending on exchange rate for me to go to Berkeley for four and a bit years, five years. Yeah. Four years. So, cause I finished Berkeley in three. It's a four year degree. I finished it in three. And then I went to Nashville for one year. And even when I was going to Nashville, I just said to my parents, I was like, even I did the second semester at Berkeley. And my dad was like, dude, like I said, dad, cause the, the Australian, exchange rate tanked and I said dad like let's just not do this like I can just come home it's fine like I got to be here it's been amazing it is what it is he's like dude this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I will work really hard I'll make sure you go which is like amazing I'm not gonna get emotional about it but he was amazing so he made it happen he pushed it through I pushed through I worked hard we got it done um and then I was like, I'm going to come back home. And they're like, no, stay, learn, go to Nashville. Like it's the music capital of the world. You've only got one shot at this in your life. Go and do it. Like right, right now is like your one shot. Go and, go and experience it. So I was like, okay. So we did that. And then I came back to Australia. So I came to Australia with zero dollars in my bank account. I had no savings. All I had were um, guitars. I literally had just all my guitars that I had. Um, I had no amp. I had... No speakers, no nothing, no effects pedals, no nothing. I just had guitars. Like my 
my I had my Stratocaster there. I had that acoustic over there, and I had the Les Paul. Those those are the guitars I had. I had the Les Paul, the Stratocaster, and I had an acoustic guitar, and that was it. I didn't have anything else. No fancy things. Now, oh, I had one extra guitar, which is not in the studio. It's the one I leave at home. It's um, an Ibanez Art Core. Now, that is where I started. So I started from there. I had a, I had a instrument to play in front of someone. So that is the bare minimum that I started with. And I was armed with a shitload of knowledge, like a lot of knowledge of how the music industry works, how music works. I was skilled in music, but I just never had a way to trans that, turn that into money, which is a big challenge for musicians, is how do I turn knowledge into money? Now, the very first step that you got to do to make money in music is you got to go get the money to get the gear to get you in the door. So whatever it takes, if you need to go clean kitchens, clean toilets, go and do a backflip, anything you need to do, go and do it. So the very first thing I did was I worked in a kitchen wrapping like wrapping like pies and lasagnas at my wife's business. So I had to work for my wife in a commercial kitchen and just sit there wrapping stuff and cutting, you know, steaks and stuff. And that's all I did for like, we'd get there sometimes at like five in the morning and we'd be working till like five in the afternoon. Like my wife and her sister grinded so hard on their business. It was insane. But I, that's the first thing I did. I went there and did that. And every little bit of money that I got from there, I went and I purchased an amp. I purchased a pedal. I purchased a guitar. I purchased a speaker. Like I, when I started gigging, I had a tiny speaker, like literally this big. Now I have like two gigantic, like 15 inch speakers in the sub. Like that's how it worked. So when I started, the very first thing you need to do is literally anything to get dollars. Now, once you're getting dollars from something, the next step is like, so that you have a piece of equipment that you can use. The next bare minimum thing to earn money is you need to be better than a beginner at playing an instrument or music in general, just be better than a beginner. And that will allow you to earn money teaching. So if you are better than a beginner and you aren't experienced at teaching, go and find a music, like a local music school or a local music, like teaching place that you can go get beginner guitar lessons and ask them, hey, I'm looking to build a career as a music instructor. Can I work for you guys and learn? Can I work for free? And then after like, a month or so, can I then take on paid, like until you feel I'm ready, can I take on paid clients? And like literally, if you have no experience, just working for free will get you money. Like, boom, that's it. Like that's the very first step. That step alone can get you to around like 250 to $500 a week. Like no problem. Like 250 to $500 a week secured. And if you pair that with whatever like, shitty job that you happen to pick up, you can stack on like another 250 to $500 a week, depending on how hard you want to work. I don't know how hard you work, but to get to a thousand, you're doing that. Now from there to get into gigging, the bare minimum to get into gigging. So this is all stage one, by the way, the bare minimum to get into gigging is you just need to know at least 20 songs. And if like you really don't know 20 songs, 10 songs, is good, just repeat them every set. Um, but I recommend 20 and then repeat the, the first set. If you, like that's the bare minimum. Now you need 20 songs and you only need to know how to sing and play them in time. So I would recommend you start singing and like we have a singing playing guitar course, so go through that one, it will help you very easily, but you need to sing and play an instrument. So you need to be able to sing and you need to play an instrument or you need to have a friend who sings and then you play the instrument. And then you just go 50-50 on the split. Like, do that. You just get 20 songs and you just have to get them in time. Sing them in time. And that is it. That is bare minimum. You do not need to be like Mariah Carey. You do not need to be like Ed Sheeran. You don't need to do anything crazy. Just do that. That is the bare minimum to get paid at least $100 a show. My very first shows were $50 a show 
with a really cool blues guy and he would get drunk at shows and then I would start singing whenever he was too drunk. That's how I started singing. Like, exactly that. I, like, that's how I started professionally singing. Before then, I just got, like, singing lessons and I was getting better and better. I was trying to learn how to sing. But I only knew, like, four or five songs. And so that's how I started. Those four or five songs then turned into six, then seven, then eight, then nine. And then I started doing a whole set at that show. And then I started doing my own shows. So stage one is try and find a place where you can teach beginners and just be a little bit better than <laughs> find a drinking blues guy that definitely is guaranteed to help you succeed. Now, the first step is obviously get the money to get the gear. Once you have gear, try and get the jobs that are going to get you paid for doing music. So you're only doing music. Now, the second stage of that is you are going to hone your craft as an educator and hone your craft as a performer. And what your goal is through repetition and through execution, you are going to replace the shitty job. And so the very first step is lower your expenses so that you can only do that. If you can do that, you've won the very first step. You have defeated the first boss, which is now I earn my soul living just doing music. Now that can be 500 to $1,000 a week very cleanly. Like you, if you do that, if you've done the first step and now you are just iterating and improving on it, boom, you've got that. By the way, if you're stuck on any of these steps and you're part of our online music school, you will have me to help you. So anytime you guys are like, oh my God, I don't know what to do here. I've been like stuck on this part. And I'll be like, bro, or sis, go and do this. You will crush. The music school is for all. Sorry, I've been watching Moana. Anyway, um, so that's the, the second stage is to defeating the day job. Like your goal is to defeat the day job. Don't have a day job. You want to just do music. Now, once you're doing that, to level up that is now you're going to make the choice of what do you like. So for me, I did not like teaching. I enjoyed seeing people succeed in music, but I did not like teaching. Teaching every day was really hard. So my one was like, how do I get to the point where I just do gigging? Now, what that meant was I had to learn more songs contextually to the crowds that I was playing at. And so that meant I had to build a repertoire. So I built a repertoire of up to like 60 to 70 songs. And that covered so much of the like spectrum of like different audiences that I was playing to. And because of my consistency of what I was doing, every time I was getting my payday, there was two things that I had to purchase. One was my biggest saving, which was the very first goal that I had, my first savings goal, which was to buy an engagement ring to, to propose to my wife. That was my first priority, and I did that. The second one was I wanted a gaming PC because I'd never had a gaming PC, and I really wanted to become a like World of Warcraft streamer, so like that failed miserably. But when I did do World of Warcraft streaming, it did pay for itself, and then that's when I quit. Uh, then the third, <laughs> third one, third one was equipment, to then do better shows. So a uh, big thing that people don't understand when they get into the gigging space, so this is going from stage two to stage three. So stage two is like you're making money through multiple streams of income in music, so like teaching and gigging, and then you're transitioning to just gigging. Now to get to just gigging, you need to have a very good skill set and a good repertoire of music and on top of that, you need to have good equipment, a good mixer, good PAs, like an extra microphone, things like that. Like you need to have things that make you look more professional within the space of like booking agents, uh, bars that you play at, things like that. You look like you know what you're doing. Even if you might not know what you're doing, because I didn't, definitely did not know what I was doing. Um, as long as you look like you know what you're doing, you'll at least get your sh your shot. And as long as you play in time, by the way, remember coming back to this thing of playing in time, you play in time and you play the songs that people like, you're hired. Boom, you've got the bare minimum. And in my town, the bare minimum is 100 to $120 an hour. So if your goal and you lower all your, your living expenses down to like three or $400 a week, like if you can do that, which is what I did early on, I dropped my living expenses down to like, I think it was like $400 a week or less. And that meant that everything that I was earning from my gigs, say I did 
um, one gig a weekend, that's $400. Uh, so that was like, or four or $500. So that's like my whole living expenses with one gig. So I work for like three or four hours and I, I pay for my whole life. And then if I was teaching on the side, like teaching as well, my entire teaching income, bam, that's savings and that's going into equip better equipment, better everything. The thing that changed for me was when COVID happened, I moved into stage three where I became a resident at a bar. So I'd started doing two shows a week minimum. And then because I was doing two shows a week and I was getting better and better and better, I stopped teaching slowly, slowly. I just stopped advertising and I wasn't taking any more students. So all I was getting was the churn of the students quitting till I finally just said, look, I'm not teaching anymore. And uh, I that took about, so the timeline of this stuff, so you guys understand how long it took me, from zero to earning money with a living of just music took me six months when I moved to Australia. And then from being able, from that six month period to earning money through gigging, it took me another year, about like about a year to get like, a successful like one one gig a week going minimum yo thank you for joining and following on twitch and then from that one year onwards so we're now at like nearly at my two-year period two-year mark that's when i started doing the residency and that's when COVID hit and so i started gigging and gigging and gigging and gigging and gigging and i started doing two shows a week then three shows a week then four shows a week to the point where there was times i was doing six to seven shows a weekend like that's me waking up and I go to, on a Friday, I play from 5 p.m., finish the show at like 8 or 9 p.m., then I go set up for the next show at 10 p.m., play till 2.30 in the morning, then I wake up at 12 p.m., uh, like at 9 or 10 a.m., get to the next show at 12 p.m., finish at 4, play the next show at 5 p.m., finish at 9, fin and then set up for the next show at 10 p.m., finish at 3 in the morning, and then wake up on Sunday and do another show, which sometimes there was a venue I played at, and just one time, like actually happened like two or three times, they made me play for eight hours. I did an eight hour set. So I played from 12 p.m. all the way to 8 p.m. So like, that's what it looked like. But when I was doing that, that was when the income was hitting like 1,500 to 2,500 a weekend, which meant I could now really reinvest into it. So you guys have watched me play these five to eight hour gigs. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. There's some been some days where I was gigging for like 14 hours straight. Yes. 14 hours straight, 12 p.m. till 2.30 in the morning. Not fun. Like really, really hard work. So like, but it got me there. So that was what my two year, so I hit my two year mark. So that's like me fully only making money from gigging. But that just meant I lost every weekend. Now, the step that I needed to make after that, which was I did not anticipate to be so hard, like this was the hardest step that I had to make, was going from stage three, because this is stage three, by the way. I'm at stage three where I'm only making money gigging. Now I'm looking at scaling my gigging so I'd play less shows but get paid more. So now we're moving to stage four. So stage four... This was the most fucking hard thing I have ever fucking done. And I iterate on how fucking hard it is so that when you guys have to go through this, understand that it is fucking hard and you have to try. And the whole time that you are trying and everyone's telling you that it's not going to work and you're wrong and you're charging too much and this is not the way. Like the whole time you're getting all that information, just know Luan is the back cheering you on being like, you can do this. So I knew that the two things that I needed to do was I needed a band that was good. And I needed equipment that was better than everything. And one thing that happened was the third thing that I didn't know, um, there was two other elements that I didn't know I needed. And once I discovered them, I was like, oh my God, I have now figured this out. So the first one, I needed a band. I put the band together. I went to go play these shows. I could get paid like $800. At this point, I was getting like, I could charge double what I was charging uh, at a pub gig. So like I do like a bar, I could charge, you get $100 an hour, I could charge double to play like an event or a corporate thing or a wedding. So how did I find a band? I originally started as a duo 
And then I just had like, would men randomly get people around town who I'd meet as musicians and interact with and like, let's go. 100% start solo or like literally whatever you can. Like start on whatever it takes to get on a stage. That's all you do, Jake. Whatever it takes for you to get on a stage, do it. But playing solo means you have higher leverage because you can sing on your own and play guitar and you make more money and you keep more of the money. Like you might get paid slightly more to do duo like the, the in as an entirety, but when you split it among each other, it's less money. So you could do solo and get paid, uh, you, you pocket more money. But if you're in a band, like your family, like for instance you, I would encourage every person in your family to learn how to sing and play an instrument and then all of you go and gig and then you pool all your money together so you can buy really dope equipment and then you can advertise yourselves as like a corporate or a really good betting. Anyway, we're getting to stage four now. I'm explaining to you how it worked. So uh, just go learn guitar. Jake, when I say learn guitar, you do not need to be very good at guitar. You just need to play a couple, like seven chords gets you a thousand songs. I kid you not. Seven chords gets you a thousand songs. Get a capo, seven chords, you crush. That's it. That's how guitar works. So easy, bro. So easy. And you should know how to do it anyway because it's going to help you and make you a better bass guitarist in your bands anyway. Like, it's you, if you know how to play guitar, you're going to be a better bassist. Anyway, let's get, get sidetracked right now. Let's go. Stage four. This is the transition. So stage four was I needed a band. Um, so I was getting paid at least 200 an hour to play corporate and, and stuff like that. What I had to do was I had to... Um, I had to cut my pay to some of the gigs I did for free. Yeah. In order to get my band paid. So I had a bassist and a drummer and we started as a trio. So I had to do free gigs. So I went from earning money from all the gigs. So then I had to do free gigs and I had to do gigs where I was getting half as much as I should have been paid to then bring them on to then build the the equity and the confidence at venues and stuff and just to build evidence that we are a band and we are good. And that sucked. Especially when people are like, hey, yeah, we'll book you solo, but the band's too much. And I needed the band to play to then get the gigs. And so that was like really rough because I had to just undercut myself pretty hard. And that was all good. But I survived. We got through it. I just That just meant I had to do more than any, anything that I had ever done. So at, at that point, I still had maybe like 10 students that I was teaching. So I was teaching, doing all the solo gigs, and then doing the band gigs. So I just had to do more. And I had to try really, really hard. Now, that was the first step. The second step was I had to upgrade all my equipment. And when you're upgrading into the next level of gear, so I had like cheaper gear, then I had to buy the better mixers the better speakers, the like a sub, like these things are not cheap. They're like $2,500, $3,000 a piece of equipment. And like when you're paying for your living and doing all that stuff, that's quite hard. And my wife and I, we were saving for our wedding and we were saving for a house. And so, which we pulled off and we nailed it. We managed to do that. Like we saved for a house and we saved for a wedding and we had a great wedding and all that stuff. But in the meantime, I was doing that and then I was still trying to like grow this business. So that was the second part. Now, the third part that I didn't, the other two elements, these are the other two that I did not know, the unknowns, which now have become like it's only now. So this is a period of about two years it took. It took me two years of doing this, of keeping the grind of the gigging to then transit to hit level four of like, I am a wedding, corporate, whatever band. It took me two years of grinding so bloody hard and the Two levers that I did not know were effective were um, entertainment. I did not know that you could learn to entertain. I did not know that you could learn to interact with crowds better and things like that. And I watched as I played guitar for another artist and I watched in the rehearsals as he practiced his crowd interaction moments. And I was like, oh my God, this is a straight up skill. I can just learn this. And the second I did that, it evolved my shows to word of mouth carrying that, oh my God, he was so great. He was like so great with the crowd and blah, blah, blah. And that started to get me more gigs. And then the other one that I didn't know was getting things that make the gigs easier for your clients. So 
that meant like having a dedicated wireless microphone for people, having the setup look really pretty, getting a rug. Like the rug is the most underrated thing I've ever seen in my entire life. You get a rug on your stage setup, people do not spill drinks on your gear anymore. And also people stay away from you. And also you can turn like a piece of concrete into a nice space with a rug. Crazy, right? It's like literally this rug, that rug there. That's the rug I take to every gig. You see it there? That's level four. Now that got me, as soon as level four was crushed and I managed to get there through the gauntlet, we hit level four and that meant I could now start charging $2,000 a show for solo and $3,000 a show for the band. That was very, very cool. Now, the next step after that, but the thing is with this is it's those shows getting booked, but you're not actually making like a lot of, like you still have to gig because you don't get heaps of those. Now, the trick is level five, which is how do you get heaps of those? So that's the only thing you do. So for me, that transition was really like, if, actually it wasn't as crazy hard as the first one, but it was still very hard. And that happened when I started had to learn more about business, had to learn about more about stacking an offer and things like that. So what I ended up coming up with, my end result was our gigs, I got so good at the playing, I got so good at, like our band was getting tighter, I had all the songs, I was getting better at entertaining and doing all that stuff. So what I did was I added videography. So now I add videography to all shows. I go and shoot videography on my breaks. And then we give them like a cinematic video at the end. And so like, say you're booking a wedding, you get like this video and they share it with all their friends. So word of mouth gets even better. I just stack the offer so ridiculously well, like that all I did was like, I just, everything I was doing in stage four, I just did more of it and I just made it better and better. And that was when a lot of you guys met me. A lot of you guys met me when I did that, when I started streaming and you could see that I was so hungry to get to the next stage. And I knew that it was the hardest, it was gonna be a really hard process because it was meant that I'd have to practice the hardest I'd ever practiced in my life. So I had to practice, I had to gig, and I had to keep working. Practice, 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 practice. Learn, 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 engage, engage, engage. And I, that's what I did, I was live streaming. The whole reason the live streaming happened was because I was performing every day. And so my feedback loop was just getting better and better and better and better and better and better. And then I did that. And then now we have finally, after a year, hit stage five, where like I literally look at my calendar next year and it is pretty damn full, like pretty insanely full, like not even a spare date in June, no spare dates in July. Like we are stacking that calendar right now. And it's just all people wanting to book me for weddings, corporate functions, like, birthday parties, like all just exceptional things. And then and then I stumbled on what level six is. You guys ready for level six? I don't know if you guys are. I don't know if you guys are bored of this conversation yet, but I'm still going back to Annie Rue because he's just wondering like, can you earn money as a musician? Damn straight you can earn money as a musician. At this point, we're taking care of our band. Our band is, is being paid well and they're taken care of. They can take care of their families, which is awesome. Um, we've got someone now who's doing our booking and that's helping them out too with their socials and stuff. And we are now going to probably bring in like videographers and stuff into our team, which is going to be so cool when I hit that like full stage. But level six was the one I did not expect. Ticketed events. And how the fuck do you do ticketed events? I had no fucking clue. I had an idea that if I did something exceptional for people, that they would want to come to these events. And so I worked really, 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 really hard to make that happen. So we started these country nights. Now the first two country nights, like we succeeded, but I made less money. I literally had to do them, again, going back to like transitioning from level three to level four, I had to do them for free to pay for all the people who had to be a part of them. So I did two shows for free, except I lost money on the second one. Now the third one is yet to happen, 
but literally the third one we're two weeks out and we've broken even. And if that works out, that will be the most high paid gig I've ever done in my entire life. Ever. Which would be insane. And all that means is I can reinvest into making an even bigger show. And so ticketed events is when you stack all of the goodwill that you've ever done over a long period of time in your community and you continue to deliver high value stuff and you constantly keep trying and you constantly do. I mean, you can even look at like, you know, so Felice was in the chat earlier and I was like, you are so part of the community. Please let me help you. I will give you two free tickets. Come to the show and have the best time with us. Like that, like that level of like, you just want to deliver a great product. Like, I lose money every time I give away tickets, but who gives a shit? I just want everyone to have the best time because if they love it that time, then the next time they might invite their friends and their friends might pay and then that might pay for more stuff. And then once you hit level six, in my opinion, I'm like, you've now hit like God tier status for gigging. Like that is when you start moving into the big realm, big boy realm. I don't know how that realm looks, but what I do think it would look like if you were very, very good I have a kind of idea would be you do ticketed events, but you crush every ticketed event. And then in between each ticketed event, you are practicing heaps. So you're just like working really, really hard for like a month. And then you only play one show and then you do another month, one show. And then those guys are making like 15 to 20 grand, 30 grand a show. We're not there yet at all, but, like if you can do that, that's how you hit that like crazy level of win. But hopefully that gives you guys insight on how to do it. Anyway, but yeah, so Anyru, hopefully that answers that question. So that's how I've done it. That's been my journey from all stages one all the way to now we're experimenting with six. I don't know how that will work. And that doesn't even include what we're doing online. So, but yes.